What's up, my friends? I'm here with my new friend, Hannah. Hannah, say what's up. Hello. We are so stoked because we get to go through some face framing today that is gonna completely change her look. Everything else in the haircut with regards to layers and length is really gonna be us just dialing it in and fitting it to this new fringe that's gonna frame her face. I'm telling you right now, I already know it's gonna look dope. Do you have your camera right now? Do you have the picture of it? Yeah. It's going to have a couple different components to it. First of all, we're gonna do a concave line in the fringe. The shortest point will be right over the offset profile, which is where it lives right now. I'm gonna build the whole haircut dry, so it's following the principles of natural dry and natural texture and natural fall. Maybe even throw it in front of your face. Let's see. Let's see how she's gonna look with these bangs. Oh, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> it looks legit. So I'm gonna start with the length first. We're gonna dial that in. It's just gonna be maybe about an inch to two inches off just to dust through the bottom. We love the juxtaposition of a longer fringe, or I should say a shorter fringe with a longer length, soft blend around the face, cutting that to natural fall. I'm gonna build some concave layers in there. That will pick up just a bit. I think we're gonna go maybe about three, four inches shorter on some of the layers just to get more of a shag sort of nature to the whole vibe of the haircut. And uh, yeah, that without further ado, let's go. So if you're stoked and you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and let's break out this haircut. Let's do it. Actually, let me have you take your chin towards your chest. So chin towards the chest just allows the hair on the underneath of this section to be slightly shorter than the hair on the surface. And that enables me to micro bevel that edge. Go. That's looking legit, my friends. Let me have you go your right ear towards your right shoulder sideways. Let's turn Hannah. You can come back up right now. All right, cool. So this is a side that we just cut. This is a side that we haven't cut yet. It's pretty close right now. So it's just gonna be a tiny little bit. Let's grab everything from behind the back of the ear. Let's create a contact point, center of the face, straight down, contact point on this right side. I don't know why I keep mixing that up. All right, perfect. There's symmetry. Point cutting all of this to keep it soft. I don't want any indentation in the haircut. And now I just have to connect the dots here. So start off at the bottom here. Oh my God, that's a lot more weight at the bottom. Look at that. On the side here, I will start with a horizontal parting. So horizontal parting just separates the top of the head from the sides of the head. And from the mid recession to the radial parting, I'm gonna drop all this hair down. But that biz nasty. First, the bottom there. And I am running out of clips, so I take and then I'm gonna turn it to a, the side here once you see the parting, because what I really ultimately want you to see is the elevation. So I know that I've got the, the destination as far as where I'm cutting to done, because this is part of the length right here, but where am I cutting from? We mentioned that we were gonna cut from the top of the shoulder, so let's check out where that is. Yeah, about right there. So let's take this and using an inside out cutting technique, it's just feather, the shortest point, so I know what I'm cutting from. This now will establish my guide to length for my shortest layer for the entire haircut. So 90 is gonna come from, again, the intersection of the radial and the, and the profile. Everything else is over-directed to that. We can see all this length right in through here. I'm gonna slightly open and close our shears as we move from our shortest point to our longest point. All right, cool, so a slight diagonal forward section. This is gonna stay on base as well. I'm gonna grab a bit of the previously cut section to have it act as what we call a traveling guide. Dudes. Sounds smart. All right, so the left side of my layers are done in the back of the head. So everything behind the radial that hangs over the back of the shoulders is legit. We're done with that side. Let's go and match the right side to it. I am going to stay on the right side of her head as a right-handed cutter. So if you are a left-handed cutter, you're just gonna be on the opposite side. So I, I sort of register where my body lives in relation to the section that I'm cutting by 
Positioning the body as I would maybe a clock. So the nose of Hannah would be 12 o'clock, her right ear would be three o'clock, center of the back would be six, and left ear would be nine o'clock. So I'm standing somewhere between six and nine o'clock. And what I'm looking at is when I go 90 to over direct, where that 90 is at the intersection of the profile on the radial, that's centered with my chest but I'm on the right side of the head, regardless whether I'm cutting the left side or the right side. We should see a V in here, which we do. This is the shy side of the head, so there's less hair over here, but I'm gonna come in and just carve a little bit more out. Diagonal forward section there. This will stay on base using a, that bit of, uh, that subsection, I should say, behind the back of the radio as a guide to length. All right, cool. There we are. There's my guide length underneath there. I'm going to push this from 90 to 135. Is that in the frame? Yep. And I'm just going to feather through this edge here, moving to the longest bit of length. Let's revisit that line and just see what we created. Oh, that's butter. All right, rad. So I've got shortest point, longest point, definitely building that concave line. Let's take my next section here, trying to find the highest point of the head, which is the top apex. Dog on a forward from there. Grab a bit of the previous to give me a traveling guide. 90 to over direct. Moving that to 135. Shortest piece falls out. Following that same structure from short to long. I'm gonna take a reference point. This is gonna become a guide to length for the right side of the head. I'm gonna drop that over to the right. And now I've got two guides to length, one coming from the profile or offset profile in this case, and one right behind the back of the radial. Come in here, find my guide to length, let that drop out, there it is. Oh my God, nice, it just, okay, so now we're really cracking. We've knocked the length out of the haircut. We built a flat line, square to the body shape. We knocked the second element out, which was our concave layers. Everything stayed on base till I got to the back of the radial. We over-directed that. Because we've got an offset profile, everything stayed on base on the shy side of the head. So where there's less hair on that part line or to the side of that part line, on the left side, we stayed on base all the way to the top apex and the mid recession, cutting shorter layers on that side. The long side of the head, we over-directed everything back. And if you guys are vibing with this right now, definitely give us a thumbs up, hit and smash the subscribe button, share this with all of your friends, and let's keep making Hannah look dope. So yes, let's do this. And now we're gonna get into the best part. So if you're just starting to tune in right now, you, you jumped in at the right part. So we're gonna get into face framing. So I have a conviction, and Hannah and I were talking about this on the front end. I have a belief system that every single person on the planet can wear bangs, but how we personalize it and adorn it to their style is everything. And that's where it all comes together. So upon the principles of facial shape and natural fall, those are things that I start to think about. Like I said, let's take it from the top apex to the mid recession and just see where that leaves us. See where this hair is hanging from the top here over the cheekbone here? I wanna make that just a little bit more narrow. I want less fringe to begin with. And then I'm gonna use this into my linear fringe. It's happening on the side of the face versus my horizontal fringe. If I decide I wanna cut that part shorter, I'm sure gonna be glad that I left it longer in the beginning. I'm gonna switch from my all-purpose shear to my carving shear. These are called curb, and but they're called curb shears because they were made for curly hair. I'm not gonna use them for curly hair. I like that I've got an arced blade on both sides, and that allows me to get the C-shaped curvature throughout the haircut and cut from the inside out. I think I'm probably gonna get into a little twist cutting technique in the front as well. Um, but yeah, switching gears right now to my curve shears.
Okay, so I'm gonna start off a little bit longer. I'll go towards the tip of the nose, bridge of the nose. I wanna see how much things shrink up. So I'm gonna grab a small little piece. I'm gonna twist it left and right. Once again, these become our shortest points and everything builds longer from here. So left and right with the hand holding the bottom of the length here. The shears slightly open and close. I'm closing the shears as I retract the shears from that section. So. Now from here, I wanna to start to build that concave shape. Positioning my body at 12 o'clock, so I'd be directly right in front of her nose if I didn't have a camera right in front of her nose. <laughs> so pulling all this straight forward, I'm gonna cut from my short to long. So towards the pivot of the blade, towards the longest little bit there, which will be at about the corner of the mouth to begin with, and then we'll cut things shorter from there if we need to. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a technique called hinging on this side which just allows me to bevel the edge a little bit. It's called micro beveling. And at the same time, cut more of the length out. So knuckles are gonna be almost sort of attached to her head. Fingertips are gonna move away from her face at a 90 degree. I'm going from that shorter point to the longer point. And at this point, I'm standing at three o'clock, bringing the shears straight towards me. Look, oh, there she is. We did it. You're so brave. the shortest pieces. Back to starching clothes. Sometimes when you first cut the fringe or shorter pieces, they almost are sort of like in shock. So all that we need to do is put moisture back in the hair, blow dry that back in, and you're good as go again. I'm almost kind of thinking about a wire. If I took a wire one direction and then the other direction kept bending it back and forth, it'd become looser, right? It would lose that tensile strength. In essence, I'm blow drying the hair one way, blow drying it back the other way and just to allow things to fall a little bit more naturally. Starting on this right side for no other reason, aside from the fact that I was already standing on the right side. I'm gonna go from my shortest length of that new fringe we just built, all the way down to the bottom here. Where am I going? Yep. It's gonna be good. We can see that there's weight right on top of the cheekbone here. But if I take this hair here and I start to elevate that shorter, if not even remove it from that section, see how that entire section is shorter. So on any social platform, when you've seen people take things teed apart against natural fall, what they're doing is the hair that falls inside the cut line here at natural fall is now cut shorter. Shorter pushing longer, as we talked about earlier, helps to whip the hair one direction or the other. In this case, we want this fringe to whip off of her face. So I'm gonna take from the top apex to the mid recession here, we're gonna go teed apart in this section, combing the hair across the top of the head, and from the mid section of the total width there, I'm gonna come from the inside and slightly slice from that guide to length at that mid section there, becoming the guide to length, slice from there towards the outside of it. It cutting these pieces shorter. Now, let's drop that back over the side of the head. So now I've got less weight right in through here and these little pieces now are shorter than the actual perimeter line there. So when I blow dry her hair, throw a little curling iron action into it and start to twist things back like this, she's gonna get that cool little whip off the side of her face, which is gonna be freaking legit. Okay, so just, I'm gonna blow dry this in there. Um, what I will do in the front is I'm gonna roll, and you'll see it in the camera right now or the display, but I'm gonna roll just this little bit right here over the forehead. And then that being that my, my brush is gonna be um, underneath the hair and the hair is gonna wrap around it this way. And then I'm gonna take the brush on the surface of that section this way and I'm gonna roll it back that way. So it starts to get this sort of like indentation this way, but then moves away from the face. So.
All right, cool. So I just got through the blow dry. I used my one and a half inch, um, what is that brush called? I forget what they're even called. Olivia Garden Brush. Um, my buddy Dom Dom just came out with new brushes too. I'm waiting for a shipment from him. He told me that they were back ordered. So using Olivia Garden right now, I use Dom Dom's, uh, Dominic's uh, boar bristle brushes. So if you're looking for a good smoothing brush, the boar bristles from Dom are great. Olivia Garden makes legit uh, ceramic barrel brushes. I can't wait to try Dom's new uh, brushes that are coming out soon and waiting for that shipment. Basically, I was just trying to find continuity in the movement of Hannah's hair. So I had natural texture in there, which is beautiful, but I wanted to fabricate just a little bit more. Now, as I'm hit, waiting for my iron to heat up, which I don't even know if I'm gonna use it or not, I'm gonna get in and dial in just a couple more pieces in the fringe here. So let's do that. So directional channel cutting right now, my friends, and shear goes in towards the nose and then back out towards the cheekbone. That's helping me to whip the hair so it moves over her brow, but towards the side of her cheek. Get my blade underneath there, lift this up and just get a couple of these little long pieces that somehow we missed. I'm definitely feeling like I'm a little bit heavy right here, so let's take some of that. Hinge that again, a little bit more elevation this time so I can displace more weight from it. And just gently sort of finessing through that section. Now, so just slowly working short little pieces in there. Okay, I'm freaking obsessed. It looks so dope, I can't even tell you. So I'm gonna get into stabilizing the style a little bit more with a curling iron. Get my one and a half inch hot tools, uh, old school style, Marcel style. And uh, I'm just gonna put a little bit more contouring in the hair, certainly in the fringe here. And I, I, I just wanna get a little bit more of that indentation right here. So clamp some of this in. Spraying in some Mr. Smith texture spray just to put some grit in there. Definitely want to get a little bit right up here in the crown of the head. All right, we did it. Anna, oh. we did it. We got it. We crushed it. So good. It looks so good. We are going to take some after shots. Thank you so much. Once again, thumbs up, smash the like uh, and subscribe button, share with your friends, and we'll see you in that next video. Peace. Yay! We did it! Yeah!